One hand. One hand. One hand, I think, is a bit out of my capabilities. <laughs> I was just going to, like, get it all in one, you know? Oh, there's a fly in my mouth. OK. It's a really nice smooth run. <laughs> There's your intro. <laughs> Hi, I'm Pfeiffer Georgie. We're here in Gloucestershire around my local home roads to do a tour of my favourite climbs with Francis Cade. I'm Francis Cade, Scott Ambassador and ex-bike racer, and I'm here to join Pfeiffer Georgie on some of our home roads. Right, where are we going? Left. Left. We're on right now your home training roads that you grew up on. We are, yeah. Where this are you going to take me? So we're doing a nice little kind of hilly loop. This bit we're on right now is always like the slog home from Tetbury, which is like we'd stop at the cafe and it's the last 45 minutes home. So I remember I'd be like maybe like 13, 14, so I'd come back here with my dad. I'd always stick them on the front because I'd be absolutely swinging at this point. <laughs> and it's like kind of, it doesn't look like it's uphill, but like this always feels like a drag. Well, age, age 13 it did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're doing this first. By the end of this ride, are we going to be swinging? How yeah, hilly yeah, yeah. are we talking here? Well, like, some of it's like 20%. Like the, the climb we're going to do, the three minute climb, that's always where I go do my efforts. Uh, still now when I come home. So tell me, how did you get into riding? Yeah, so um, my dad always used to race, uh, yeah, for GB and internationally, and I used to live in Herne Hill, so when I was four, they brought me to the velodrome there and got me on a, a little track bike. Um, and yeah, my whole family cycle, so I started riding four and started racing when I was six and have been doing it ever since, really. So were you racing around London? Have we done some uh, of the same races? You raced at Hog Hill? I raced at Hog Hill. Yeah, I won nationals there twice, actually. Amazing. When I was under 14 and under 16. So it didn't take you long to get signed by Team DSM? No, so actually, um, yeah, in my first year as a junior, then um, I won Gap Melbourgum and the yeah DS from Team Summer, which is what it was then, um, approached me and then we kind of started talking. Um, and just kind of had contact throughout like those two years as a junior um, and then yeah I signed in September just as, as I was yeah finishing my two years and yeah I was able to step up straight away to the world tour which was pretty cool actually. So being a world tour rider what's that like what's the lifestyle differences? A lot of traveling yeah um, I feel like I'm always moving around like this year especially I've had a really busy spring classics vlog, which has been nice. Um, <sighs> it's quite a big hill. It's quite a big hill. It's not weird. It's so weird. weird. Like we're like one, like the team does it like one lower. So I think it would be like, off zone two is zone three. So growing up racing, who were your heroes? Yeah, so uh, Lizzie Dagnan has always been someone I've looked up to. Um, I remember, I was racing in Aston actually when I was I think 11 or 12 and it was the London Olympics and um, I was watching her yeah, get the silver medal and also Voss um, as well as Lily has been one of my idols so yeah when I stepped up um, into World Tour like some of the first races and I got to race against them and I was yeah a bit starstruck and I think even at Worlds last year then um, that was the first time I properly met Lizzie, and I was still a bit of a fan girl. Like when she sat down at dinner, because um, I mean, yeah, if it's someone you've looked up to your whole life, it's like pretty special to get to be her teammate in a race. Yeah, of course. Does it affect you in the race? Did, it, did you say you felt a bit starstruck? Did you have to put those feelings aside? I mean, when yeah. You're in the bunch. Like for sure, my first year, then I would, if they came near me, I'd, I'd just like move out, give them all the space they yeah, wanted. Yeah. But I think, yeah, now then I think we're more there's more just like a respect that yes they were 
or they are, yeah, I do look up to them, but you have as much right to fight for position as they do. Um, so I think it's, yeah, my mindset on that has changed a bit. survived the loop. We are. Last kilometre, <laughs> almost back to the cafe. No wrong turns. Uh, Absolutely that. flawless. Yeah. <laughs> no wrong turns on camera. Yeah, no, if I didn't take you up a climb that was completely unnecessary, did she? Are you ready for lunch? Oh, I'm so ready. That's the bit I'm best yeah, at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I have a cappuccino, please? And a can of Coke as well, please. Lincoln uh -huh. has a special place in my heart. I've done a bike race there before, and so have you. Mm -hmm. And the race that you did led you to be national champion. How did it go down? Yeah, um, it was like really late in the season because I think a lot of the races were moved, yeah, because of COVID. Um, a lot of them were pushed back, so I wasn't sure how I was going to feel because um, it's like end of October and I'd had, yeah, actually my busiest season up to date. Yeah, I'd raced Lincoln twice before, so I kind of knew the course and the Michael Gate climb and how it played out. Um, and yeah, on the day it was like, I remember it just being freezing cold and raining and that kind of suits me. So um, I was happy about that, but I still didn't know how I was going to feel. Um, and just, yeah, on the day I just had like, you know, one of those days where it just all goes well. Everything and you, fell into and place. And you feel amazing. Yeah. And so, yeah, every time at the climb, I just like wasn't suffering and I was just like, yeah, riding within myself. Um, I still didn't like think that I could wait till the last time up because I thought some other riders had like had a better punch than me. So with a few laps to go, then I like made an attack to kind of test it out a bit, and I managed to get a gap on my own just for a little bit over the top. So then I kind of thought, yeah, maybe I can if it stays together, then just go full gas from the bottom the last time up. On the left hand side, where well, Fight for Georgia emerges from nowhere. Fight for Georgia from Team DSN has stolen a march. She rounds the left hander. The road will kick up again. I was expecting people to come by because that's what always happened when I raced Lincoln before. Um, but then I crossed the line and no one was there. So it was like a real shock. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Well, what a fantastic result. Another sharp acceleration from the 21 year old. This could be the title. She rounds the corner back on to the tarmac mercifully for the last time to pick up some pace. The crowd urge her on. I think she's got this one, Hannah. She has onto the cobbles for the last time and the title is hers. What a win for Fife for Georgie. She cannot believe it. Absolutely sensational. Scott has a little present for you. This is. Oh, wow. <laughs> you winning at Lincoln. Oh. Solo. That's so cool. Oh, it brings back memories looking at this. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that was a cool day. I know where I'm going to put that. I've got a place in my room next to the jersey. Perfect. So you mentioned Lizzie Dygman being one of your heroes. Yeah. How does it feel other people are going to be looking at you in the same way? now that you're national champion. It's strange to think that actually, because I think, yeah, riders like Lizzie, I've always looked up to and yeah, I guess I don't see myself yet as someone who someone else looks up to, but I think for sure in the future, um, yeah, as my career goes on, I hope I can inspire kind of younger girls who just like riding their bike to kind of think that they can do that as their career if they love doing it. I think races like Paris-Roubaix and like the Tour de France this year, just kind of having these high profile events and the calendar just bring women cycling to like a whole wider audience and I think just to show them that it is exciting and that they can do it if they want and yeah that is something that I would like to yeah kind of leave a legacy in cycling. Times are changing and it's very exciting to see. Thank you so much for letting me join you on this ride it's been an absolute honour. Let's finish these pastries yeah, and then uh, definitely. you got a ride high. No. <laughs> see you later. See ya. Have fun with that. <laughs>